This is my disc destroyer. It's a mean little machine with one job, testing grinding discs. With so many grinding discs and countless reviews, it's hard to separate fact from fiction. This is where the disc destroyer comes in. It cuts through the noise, delivering real results. No bias, no sponsorships, just cold hard tests. Grinding discs can face a lot of real world challenges, like high and low pressures, hot and cold materials, and of course, fast and slow speeds. This machine tests it all, so that we can finally find the truth in the reviews. Today I am testing the New York Skillcraft Type 27 flap disc, coming in at $4.86 a disc. I looked everywhere online, but I couldn't find any reviews, which surprised me because this disc is not too expensive. With no reviews, I will have to come up with my own. Will the New York flap disc perform well, or will it be a letdown? Let's test them to find out. Each disc will be grinding this test bar to see how much it can remove within 20 minutes time. This will chart out its story and tell us exactly how this disc behaves based on how much material it removes at any given point. But if the disc stops effectively grinding the bar or just straight up disintegrates, the test is over. Let's begin. First I wanted to get a baseline for how this disc performs. So I started by simulating light pressure grinding. I did this by adding a four pound weight to my rig. This is roughly the weight of the grinder. So how did it do? Well, at the eight and a half minute mark, I noticed the disc was not cutting the coupon anymore. So I ended the test. Taking a closer look, I measured about six inches of material removed. Next, I wanted to see how the disc would grind against a hot weld. I simulated this by heating up the first few inches of my coupon before I started grinding. I was hoping the disc would cut more metal, but these results were almost identical. After about eight minutes, only six inches of material was removed. With the baseline set, next, I am going to lower the grind speed. This could help the disc gain some longevity. So I kept my four pound weight, but I lowered my grinding speeds from 11,000 RPMs to 6,000. And this switch actually got the discs to grind a bit longer, but they cut off less material. So what's happening here? Huh? These discs are glazing and losing abrasive quality. We can see this by looking at the discs after the tests. So to avoid glazing, I am going to have to switch up another variable. This time it's the grind pressure. So I put my speeds back to 11,000 and I swapped my four pound weight for eight. And this time, the New York started cutting at a quick rate. And by the two minute mark, it had taken off over three inches. This time the disc was able to grind for the whole 20 minute test and took off close to 22 inches. This was a major improvement over the last test. Finally, I am going to test this disc on heated metal one more time to see if it can get us any better results. And again, it started off strong, cutting away material at an even faster rate than in the previous test. At the end of the 20 minute test, I measured 24 inches of material had been removed from the coupon. The added pressure definitely helped out this disc. So how should you use this disc to get the best results? Well, I would definitely apply heavy and even pressure when grinding with the New York. This will help it cut the most material, especially if done on a hot metal. Now it's up to you to decide if these results are worth the $4.86 price tag. If you'd like to see the data I've collected for this disc, as well as the other discs in these tests, I've posted them at the Fireball Forum, linked in the description. I'm gonna keep posting more and more of these test videos, so stay tuned to find the truth in the reviews. And if you're wondering why I built the rig the way I did, how it works, and what it's all about, I have a video that goes into great detail that you should check out. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.